Hey guys, it's Dina, your Mindset Evolutionary here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women just like you and me. Welcome everybody. If you haven't already coming in the door, please hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. Tonight we are going to be discussing, trans uh, okay, I've got tongue-tied already, <laughs> transcending race and black inferiority. And we're going to touch on a couple of, let's see, we have a couple of books here. Um, we're going to touch on How to Find Meaning by Getting Over Yourself, which was written by Natalie Murad. That is um, a blog post. And then we're also going to touch on some quotes that came out of a book from um, Tom Burrell. Um, Ten powerful quotes from his brainwashed Challenging the Myth of Black Inferiority. Again, that's by Tom Burrell. Tom Burrell um, was a man who was, let's see, he's a marketing and communications pioneer, and he's a recognized leader and change agent cited for revolutionizing the use of positive and realistic images of African Americans in television advertising. So some of you may be familiar with him. Welcome to everybody who is coming in. Again, if you haven't already, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. And I want to say hello to all my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings, my queens out there, and my kings. Um, it's Dina Jacobs, your Mindset Evolutionary. Let's get right into this. So there's a story that we're telling ourselves about what it means to be black in America. And from what I can see, it's a nightmare story of self-sabotage, self-defeat, perpetual self-loathing. A nightmare story rooted in shame, disgust, fear, guilt, and defeat. It is our monster, the boogeyman, and it is black inferiority. Black inferiority is a projected, is, sorry, is a projection. Now these are, you know, my thoughts and opinions on this. Um, Black inferiority is a projection from our shadow selves, and it's been imposed on us by the larger society. So I think initially it was a projection of their shadow selves, their own um, inferiority complex and what they were doing to us and enslaving us and um, beating us and, and just generally mistreating us and using us in a way that was very foul, foul and um, demonic. Um, and I think they started to project a lot of their negative energy and their shadow self onto us. And we took it on and it became a part of our shadow selves. And so um, black inferiority is a projection of their shadow self onto us that portions of our community have internalized to the detriment of our collective mental, spiritual and physical health. Um, so what are some of the deeply held beliefs and lies of black inferiority? I want to put that question out to you tonight and see what your thoughts are on it before I kind of get into what my assessment of that situation is. And so I see we have one comment, Sharon Patrice Dowdu. Hello, Queen. Hello, Queen. How are you? Um, if you guys can go ahead and start typing in, what do you, what are some of your deeply held or what are some of the deeply held beliefs slash lies, because a lot of them are mistruths, of black inferiority that you see out here um, perpetuated today? So um, waiting for a few comments to come in. In the meantime, if you haven't already, please take a moment when you're done watching this video to go to Fly Nubian Money to get your money right and understand the financial world and economics and how things work in our society financially get your money up or if you have a business idea you should definitely check out flynubianbusiness.com and when you get a moment real quick while we're waiting for some comments to pop up if you could please text the word queens to 31996 that's 31996 text the word queens and you will get some text alerts and updates so how is everybody doing out there tonight we had a very intense week with all of the um the stuff that was going on in the community the back and forth i want to know how people are feeling tonight how are you queens doing um anthony weston says number one hair okay cool thanks i'm gonna take that as a positive thank you anthony weston but let's get into this question what are some of the deeply held beliefs and lies of black inferiority
So um, don't be shy. You know, this is a safe space for people to come and make comments and discuss these issues. It's all in love here. Um, we are going to do what we can to touch upon ways to transcend black inferiority and transcend the labels of race. So um, since I haven't really seen you guys, I'm going to wait for you guys to put in some, some of your comments and answers to that question. I'm going to go into some of the quotes that we had by Tom Burrell. And so I'm sure you saw, hey, Calvin Roberts, how are you? Um, the quote that I put up there in the... Um, the, I guess it's sort of like the um, comments box where I put some information and some links for you guys to reference later on. Um, in many ways, African Americans have romanticized and institutionalized low expectations. Often our goal is not to be the best, but to be the best black whatever. Along the line, powerful forces realized there was gold in black divisions. And that's from Tom Burrell. So I just want to um, be completely transparent that I took a couple of his quotes and merged them together just for the sake of um, getting to the point of some of his quotes because he has a lot of them that are really good. And again, I put the, lo the link there. There was an article written by Uchina Ede, um, 10 Powerful Quotes from Brainwash Challenging the Myth of Black Inferiority by Tom Burrell. And that is a book. I have not read the book. I would definitely let you guys know that. But I did do some research on it earlier, came across these quotes that kind of um, summed it up. And um, let's see, there's a couple more in here where he talks about the original quote is somewhere along the line, producers of hip hop came to realize that the real money, the real avenues to fortune and fame came via music about sex, drugs, and violence. How they quote unquote made it on the carcasses of those who trespassed on their turf, either in the streets or in the industry. Along the line, powerful forces realized there was gold in black music division. And I took that quote and I kind of dropped the word music Along the line, powerful forces realized there was gold in black divisions. And as I'm sure some of us can see out here today, there's some division going on in the community. And this could be an opportunity for those, the powers that be, to kind of forge for gold, kind of sift for gold in that. How can they use that against us? It's been used against us many, many times in the past. And we're in a present moment where I think if we are self-aware as a community, we can step back and kind of self-reflect and then possibly transcend some of what is going on to get to the higher goal of what we are trying to accomplish here um, and move ourselves forward. So um, a lot of this black inferiority, as we've discussed before, comes to us from the media. And with Tom Burrell being a media, you know, mogul in the sense that um, he was able to shift how African Americans were being marketed to because he was working in the advertising industry. And we know that advertising is one of the most powerful um, ways to communicate values it's a powerful way to communicate um, desires and instill certain types of wants. Um, it's a powerful way to kind of lead people to fulfill their needs through the buying of products. And a lot of times products will um, align themselves with a set of values that they feel will connect them to a community that will cause that community to spend their money. So advertising has been a way in the past that our image has been co-opted <clears throat> and used against us in some ways um, and also been used to kind of manipulate us into buying into whatever it is that they're trying to sell. And a lot of it touches into our pain point, our shadow self, which is our black inferiority complex that a lot of us are carrying in the community. And so how what are some of the ways that we can we can get over this? But before we dive into that, I'm going to check on your comments. 
and see what you guys have said. So we have Joe Andrew said, there is no such thing as coalitions with anyone, blacks or on our own. Okay, that's a very interesting. I've heard that um, kind of mindset many times in the past. I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, Lakeisha Dobbins says, you look so much like Rosanda Thomas Chili. Thank you. I feel like someone says that almost every single video. She looks really good for her age. She's holding it down. Beautiful woman. So I'm going to take that as a compliment. Thank you, Lakeisha. But the question that I'm putting out to you all tonight, and I really want to see some um, people throw it, throw it in there. What are some of the deeply held beliefs and lies of black inferiority. Come on, people. You know, I'm so used to you guys being very um, interactive with me and jumping into the comments and sharing your thoughts. This is a safe space for you to come in and listen and learn and share your thoughts and ideas. And I'm going to share some of my thoughts and ideas and we can have a very lively and open discussion and hopefully walk away better than when we came in. So comments, where are the comments? Anyway, let me jump in. So what I have written down, some of the things that I have seen, this monster, this nightmare of black inferiority that we are kind of situated in within our shadow selves, and everyone has a shadow self. Every individual has a part of themselves that is the dark side of themselves. It's the side that we're not so proud of. It's the side that, you know, maybe has low willpower, maybe has some addictive nature. Um, the side of us that is doubtful, judgmental, um, doesn't have our best interests in mind at all times, kind of dwells on the negativity of the past um, and, and doesn't believe in or have any hope for the future, doesn't want to push forward. So um, that is what black inferiority is. It's a part of us in our community that doesn't believe that we can transcend our current conditions and mindsets. And so black inferiority basically tells us we ain't ish. Now, I like to keep the language pretty clean, but you, you know what I'm saying here. It's telling us we're nothing. Black inferiority keeps us in a poverty mind by saying that we will never be able to economically compete economically on our own. Like we need the help of others to help to help us to be economically sound. Um, black inferiority pushes those who excel economically out of the community, telling everyone that those who excel economically are always sellouts, whitewashed, or, or Uncle Tom's. Um, black inferiority tells us if we build it, they will steal it. So there's no use in even trying. Black inferiority tells us that there's only room for one way of thinking. Black inferiority tells us that our leaders must be broke and flawless to be great, meaning that they have to be perfect people and they can't make any money. They got to, you know, be doing it all on struggle mode the whole time. Black inferiority tells us that we can only be successful as entertainers or athletes. That's the only acceptable way. Black inferiority tells us, or black inferiority enjoys judging others in the community harshly. Black inferiority tells us not to trust each other because there's not enough room at the top. There can only be one black first. There can only be one black CEO. There can only be one black billionaire. There can only be one black mogul. There can only be the great, you know what I'm saying? Like when we're always trying to be the quote unquote first, when we've already been the first historically. So there's really no such thing as black first in this day and age because mostly everything has already been done before and was done way back in Africa somewhere before we even got here. So that's a lie, right? Black inferiority um, tells us there's a little bit of ratchet and a little bit of hood and a little bit of ghetto in all of us and encourages us to bond over the fact or be ostracized if we dare to disassociate ourselves from those stereotypes as niggas. And I'm going to use that word in this video tonight um, just to illustrate some points. It's not a word that I typically like to use, but um, hopefully you will forgive me for using that word and understand that I'm using it academically. Um, black inferiority tells us that blacks can't ever have nothing, can't ever get it right, and ain't worth it. 
So those are some of the things that came to mind when I started, you know, really looking inside myself to say, you know, what are some of the beliefs that I have held um, that maybe I'm still grappling with, still dealing with, and still looking to move past and transcend? And, you know, I'm kind of thinking about that because there was so much going on in the community, so much back and forth, so much, you know, bickering and disagreements. And I started to resonate with some of that in these black inferiority lies and I could see them being manifested. So in my opinion, we must transcend the imposed black inferiority lies. And ultimately, a lot of times they are very community supported. We have to tr transcend that as individuals and then collectively as a community, we have to get rid of that story. We have to let go of that story of what it means to be black. This is how we transcend the negative aspects of race. By letting go of that story. First, you have to become self-aware of where that story lives in you, where aspects of that story lives in you. So I'm going to put this question out to you guys once again. What are some of the deeply held beliefs or lies of black inferiority that have resonated with you that you have felt yourself e either connecting with or you know how sometimes people be like you know I'm a little hood I'm a little ratchet or you know how sometimes people look to our leaders and expect them to be perfect flawless beings um, sometimes we feel that when we go on a job that we have to be perfect because we're black and and we can't have make any mistakes Making mistakes is part of life. Making mistakes is part of your growth as a human being. It's part of your evolution in order to get to whatever it is that your purpose is in this life. No one on this earth is going to go without making any mistakes. That's just not possible. So why would we as a community or, or as a people, as individuals, expect ourselves to be perfect and then expect others in our community to be perfect. I don't expect anybody to be perfect, but there have been times when I have put a lot of pressure on myself as a black woman to conform to the ideas or the um, ideals of black inferiority. And so in dealing with this, um, I started to do some research and just try to figure out how can I transcend? How can I move beyond? And I want to share that with you. So um, you guys are being very shy tonight. Um, C. Enoch Thompson says, I can only be an artist or a scientist, not both. Is that true? Is that true that you can only be one or the other? I think it would be pretty difficult to exist in life only being one thing because we have so many roles that we take on in society. But what does it mean to really cling to being black in America? And how do we transcend the archetypes that are put upon us, the stereotypes that are put upon us to get to the bigger purpose of what we are doing here in today's times? So I would say, you know what guys, give me one second. I need to make an adjustment and I'll be right back. Okay, I just needed to close the door there. <laughs> so um, we're going to get into what does it mean to transcend? Kings and queens, we can break free of this black inferiority complex. And it's not going to be easy. It's definitely going to take some work on our parts. And I think that us in the community um, really have a responsibility to work on ourselves individually so that we can bring our whole selves to the community and come together collectively and move our agendas forward. And so I'm just, you know, speaking tonight from my heart. I'm speaking um, from a place of love and compassion for every one of us, including myself, that we want to move things forward and we want to um, move past some of the negative energy that is flowing out here um, in the community right now, right? So how do we do that? How do we transcend? So what does transcend even mean? Because I had to look that up because I was like, you know, I think I know what transcend means. 
but maybe I don't have the clear definition. So according to Google, Google transcend is a verb. Be or go beyond the range of limits of, right? So you're you're going beyond the limits or the range of something. It could be something abstract or conceptual. It could be a line in the sand, a division, um, in a degree of excellence to be superior. So when we talk about black excellence, we're talking about the opposite of our shadow selves, right? We're talking about that side of us that we know is great, that side of us that can accomplish whatever it is that you as an individual and us as a collective set our minds to do. We have done some amazing things in our past, in our history. Our ancestors have done some just incredible things. If you don't know about the history of inventions, breakthroughs, and it's beyond music and athletics. We had people who were great inventors. We had people who were great thinkers. We had people who um, made breakthroughs in medicine, science. Um, a black man invented the internet, for example. I don't think very many black people even know that thing that we're on all day on social media was invented by a black man. Um, so to transcend means to go beyond what we're currently, the current state that we're in, and move forward to elevate ourselves, elevate the conversation, and move more into our purpose, flow into our purpose, right? So transcendence from a religious aspect, and this is from Wikipedia, in religion, transcendence is the aspect of a deity's nature and power that is wholly independent of the material universe beyond all known physical laws. Thus, a God may transcend both the universe and knowledge, and it is beyond the grasp of the human mind. So when we're talking about spiritual transcendence, we're talking about oneness with God, right? So we're talking about elevating ourselves to a place where we can have a vision, right? Where we can have a collective vision, we can have an individual vision that can then be joined into the collective vision and manifest from that mind energy, that spiritual oneness that we have. And that's what a movement is, essentially. When we're involved in a movement that is a transcendence into something that is a higher power, that is above the individual, and is ser serving the collective of humanity. Self-transcendence, this comes from Google. The overcoming of the limits of the individual self and its desires in spiritual contemplation and realization. So the overcoming of the limits of the individual self and its desires in spiritual contemplation and realization. Higher consciousness is the consciousness of a, of a higher self. Transcendental reality or God it is the part of the human being that is capable of transcending animal instincts and negative conditioning or conditioning period, right? So that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about how do we transcend? How do we transcend our black inferiority complex and get past the negative conditioning that we have towards each other, which ultimately is just a reflection of negativity that we have about ourselves, right? Not trusting each other. Um, feeling that making money is a bad thing if you're in the, if you're a black person, being economically um, wealthy, being economically smart is something that, oh, that's for white people. Or if you do reach that level or that upper echelon, then you have to be corrupted because obviously a black man or a black woman who is reaching a certain level economically or reaching a certain level of success um, is not down for the community because they have allowed themselves to um, generate wealth. Wealth is something that I think all of us aspire to, individually as well as collectively. And it doesn't make sense for us to have an aspiration towards that and then shun people who have achieved that. No man or woman is perfect. And part of the movement or the transcendent energy um, pathway that we want to walk on, um, in my opinion, from doing my studies, is that we want to look beyond the, we want to be present and see where we are, but we also want to transcend into what is the bigger picture? What is the vision that we have as individuals and as a collective community? And we want to keep ourselves 
in that energy, in that mind space, and stay focused, right? Now, we understand that Black inferiority exists, and we may not be able to t ever totally eradicate um, some of those things that have been put upon us. But in our movement to um, kind of see those things, understand that they're there, but not be distracted by them as we stay focused on the, the bigger picture, the bigger goal, the vision that we have, the mission, the purpose of why we are coming together for certain you know, causes and certain um, things that we feel we are owed, we know that we are owed and that are due to us. We have to transcend in order to, I'm going to use an old school term, keep our eyes on the prize. Do you remember them saying that back in the 60s? Keep your eyes on the prize. That is transcendent, in my opinion, is when we keep our minds and we keep ourselves focused on what the bigger picture is. Yes, you can acknowledge the flaws. You can see the things that are going on that need to be reconciled, that need to be addressed, handle them, but don't get stuck there. We have to move ourselves forward. We have to transcend and move towards our Black excellence, the realization of Black excellence in our community as individuals within ourselves, by taking care of ourselves, by being self-aware, and by recognizing where those areas are, where we're feeding into the Black inferiority complex, see that, and then do the shifts and the adjustments, adjustments that we need to make to keep ourselves elevating and moving forward. Okay, so let's look into how we do that. So How to Find Meaning by Getting Over Yourself was written by Natali Morad on November 16th of 2018. I did put the link there if you want to Google this and look into it later. So her article um, kind of touches on psychedelics and some other things, but there were some pieces in there that I found really useful that were not directly connected to um, the use of psychedelics or anything to you know, elevate your mind or free your mind. I'm not into that at all. That's my disclaimer. So when you go and read the whole article, I've already gave you the disclaimer. I'm not encouraging anyone to do any drugs or psychedelics. What I am encouraging you to do is tap into your spirit and tap and connect that with the higher spirit, the higher, the, the greater mind, God energy, however you want to see it. Um, and kind of allow yourself to connect to that higher purpose and elevate yourself spiritually so that you don't get caught and stuck in the muck of the lower vibrational negative energy. Again, it is good to acknowledge things that are going on, to see them, to think about them critically, gain an understanding for yourself, what's happening, allow things to be revealed out of chaos, can come some really amazing things can, you know, we have the universe theoretically came from the Big Bang and I'm sure that was hella chaotic when it happened, but then now we here on earth, this beautiful planet, right? Full of amazing people, animals, everything we could ever want. It could be a paradise. Some people could look from another planet somewhere out in space and be like, wow, they're down there living in an amazing, you know, place. Now to us individually, depending on your situation and how you're living and how you have manifested things in your life, maybe not so much. And I'm not saying that you're just going to be always looking out into the future, but you can be grounded in yourself and your situation and, and see that and be present in that. But in order for us to move forward, everything that has ever been created or realized in this world has first been seen in your mind, in your spirit. And then it has moved out into the real world in front of you, the present moment as a manifestation of what we have projected. So um, this young lady, Natalie, she talks about Maslow's Pyramid of Human Needs. So I want to just show you that, the different steps of transcendence, right? So here we have it. We have the psychological needs, which are the basics of food, water, and warmth. Then we have the safety needs. Make sure you're secure and safe. 
Belongingness, that's to the groups, the community, that's intimate relationships, friends, you know, the community. Um, we have esteem needs, prestige, and feeling of accomplishment, and self-actualization at the top. And that is achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. Now, this was his original, this was Maslow's original pyramid of human needs. Um, most of us are familiar with that. Um, it's five layers. According to the model, and I'm reading from her article, we, healthy humans, have a certain number of needs presented below. And I just went over that with you. However, we can only meet these needs in hierarchical order. So first in the community or as an individual, you got to you got to make sure that basic needs are taken care of food, water, warmth, you know, your health. And we've been talking a lot about self-care and um, how to, you know, take care of your mental, which is going to help you to take care of your physical and tap into the spiritual. Right. Um, then you have your safety needs, right? We need to make sure that the community and the individuals are safe and secure. So that's something, you know, that I know has been going back and forth in the news, et cetera. How do we do that? That's something we should be working on. Those are considered to be basic needs. Then we get into the psychological needs, which are esteem, um, belongingness, love. Every one of us needs to feel love. Every one of us needs to feel cared for, friendship, community, bonding. Are we bonding over the right things? And uh, I guess I don't feel comfortable using the word right or wrong because I'm not here to judge anybody. But what I'm asking, the question that I'm presenting to those of us who are here, and I still am waiting for more comments to come in, but are we bonding? Are we allowing ourselves to bond over something that is in a very negative and unhealthy vibrational energy? Right. And if we do for that moment. Right. How do we take that bond and elevate it up to something that can be more productive and beneficial for us in our movement towards black excellence? Right. So in the psychological needs, we all need to feel like we belong. Right. And so in our community, we're trying to find ways to feel as though we belong. But a lot of those ways that have been put upon us of belongingness, right, has created a lot of division. A lot of that has caused us to pick sides, right? And this is not just speaking about recent developments. This is talking historically, right? Um, either you're struggling and you're a struggling activist in the community or you're a capitalist and you're a sellout and you've made all this money right? Where can we find a place that we can meet in the middle and take it beyond those two camps, right? What is it that we're really trying to accomplish, you know? So that gets into the esteem, right? Prestige and feelings of accomplishment. How do we do that? You know, how do we recognize what have we accomplished? What has been accomplished in your personal life? Because nothing can be done as a collective if we don't first deal with the individuals, right? So me as an individual, I try to think sometimes, you know, what have I accomplished? And sometimes I tell myself that I haven't accomplished anything. But then when I really sit with myself, I realize that that is a lie. That is part of my shadow self, me thinking negatively about myself. There's no way I could have been on this earth for as long as I've been on this earth and not accomplished anything great. Every person has two sides. Even the most evil person has a side to them that someone else who knows them has seen that is a side that is loving and gentle, right? Everybody has dual sides. So there's a part of everybody's psyche that needs to feel that they have accomplished something and that they have a certain amount of prestige, whether that's an internal thing, whether that's within your family unit, whether that's at your job or within the larger community and society. Then we get into self-actualization, which is achieving one full potential. Achieving the full potential, that means hitting the larger goals. What are the larger goals that you are trying to achieve? Once you start climbing up this and looking at this ladder, that's when we can move ourselves out of the negativity of black inferiority. We can start to 
break some of those chains to let go and release ourselves from the negative thinking, feeling that we have to resonate with each other. That's the only way we can bond. And again, I think this comes from some historical things that have happened where maybe that was the only way we we were allowed to really bond is if someone was getting beaten or someone was, you know, being in a really bad situation during our times in bondage and we had to soothe each other. And so it created a, I would say like a, um, what do you call it? Like a cycle, um, sort of like, that's the only way we can bond, right? Is through negative energy. I'm here to say that there's a way we can transcend that. And I know you know this, but I'm just here as a reminder. And it's something that I was thinking about and I wanted to share with you. So let me check in. I see there's a few more comments. Um, w. Alvin Royster says, financially, why is it that taxes are imposed upon our race, but we have to have our voting rights renewed every few years? That is a really good question. And I am probably not the person to answer that. Um, you know, everyone pays taxes in America. Um, even wealthy people pay taxes, but what they do is they look for the loopholes and they play the game in such a way that they can get around paying taxes at the same rate that we do as the average person. Because most of us don't play the game in the same way that they do when it comes to taxes. They have businesses. And people who are business owners, they kind of know this. When you have businesses or you are a freelance individual, there's a lot of different write-offs that you could take to um, eat away at your tax debt. And so that's where you either end up paying less tax or you're getting refunds in your taxes, right? But everyone <clears throat> in America has to pay taxes. Even people who are not citizens, they may not be filing taxes at a 1040 at the end of the year, but when they go to the store, when they buy gas, when they buy clothes, food, whatever it is that they're purchasing, whenever they're trading on any level, they're paying some kind of levy, some kind of tax. So everybody pays taxes. I'm not sure how that relates to us renewing our voting rights every few years, but if you have some more information on that, then you should jump on a live and you should share it with us, um, Alvin, because um, I'm not the person to be able to to enlighten us on that. But thank you for putting your comment in. Wendy Martin says, absolutely. Barnes Joseph says, fire, fire, fire. Teresa Dobson says, why is it that it's always us black folks who are trying to transcend race? Why do we need to transcend out of the black race? Excellent question, Teresa. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Okay, so I thought about that and Transcending race, from my perspective, is about transcending black inferiority, okay? So there, if you think about what it means to be black in America, I think we all can agree that there's a lot of negative energy that is put upon blackness from the greater society. Now, we can either decide as individuals or collective community to accept or reject that projection that is given to us, right? And what I'm saying is that unfortunately, if you look around at our music, some of the movies and the imagery that's being put out about us, um, things that are being said about the community, and not to say that some of the things aren't statistically true, as far as poverty, you know, having less wealth, et cetera. These things may be true according to studies and research that has been done, but do we have to own that in the sense of, yes, you wanna see it and be realistic about where things are, but then you have to allow yourself to seek the way out to look at how can I move beyond as an individual and as a collective community, these statistics, or maybe we just want to say statistics, right? Is that maybe some people feel comfortable saying in those statistics, there's something called, I call poverty porn. And I feel that um, there's certain 
outlets that really get into poverty porn where they're always showing you how downtrodden it is when you're a minority and they're always giving you statistics of how we can't get ahead and if you if you constantly feeding into that and allowing that to enter into you into your mind and your spirit then you start to take on that energy of struggling of woe is me i can't you know i'm a black woman so i'm a double i'm a double negative or you know i can't ain't nobody gonna do this ain't gonna let me do that because i'm black or you know blacks are just poor we're just a bunch of poor people and then we get blinders on and we can't see our way out so i would say my answer to, to that question is i would put it back to you it's not about not wanting to be black because I'm always going to be black, right? It's about transcending what the greater society is trying to project onto me as a black woman. I don't have to allow myself to tell the story internally of what it means to be black. I'm poor. I'm struggling. I can't, anything I make, they gonna steal it. They always, they always stealing something from us. They always taking something from us. We don't have to feed into the thing of crabs in the barrel where we're always pulling each other down. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying transcending. I, I think, you know, personally, I want to move beyond that. And I'm sure there are others of you who feel the same way that you want to move beyond those cliches and those stereotypes of the angry black woman, of the coons of the, what are some of the other things we've discussed here? The Jezebel, the ratchet, you know, the violent rapist black man. Those are the type of things I'm talking about us being able to transcend. Violent neighborhoods, quote unquote, black on black crime, <clears throat> victimhood, <clears throat> excuse me. Those are the things that we are um that i'm talk that i'm discussing about when i'm saying transcending race transcending race which is a construct that was created by others outside of us why are we so attached to some of those things that's a question i would put out to the people who are here let's discuss it i mean i think teresa brings up a really excellent question is there anyone else out there who would like to throw something in why do we need to transcend out of the black race? It's not about, to me, transcending out of your blackness. So I want to make that distinction, Teresa, because I'm black. I'm melanated, right? And I am a descendant of slaves, amongst other things, because I think a lot of us have mixed heritage. And I know I'm not directly mixed, but I know that I have Native American and white in my family lineage, right? Somebody did a family tree and we saw the history, right? So it's not about transcending that which I am physically. It's about transcending the stereotypes and the negativity and the, the lie of black inferiority, quoting Dr. Shell Tuette Grills. That is something that exists within our community and we can work individually and then collectively to move beyond those things, to move beyond those statistics. Yes, we're aware of statistics of poverty, of how things are moving in such a way where we may end up um, not having a lot of wealth right and becoming quote unquote as some say a permanent underclass but that's not something i am personally willing to accept as my life sentence as a black woman now i don't know how you feel about it but i'd love to hear some more comments from you so teresa please you know feel free let's have a discussion about this keep going so Sonia Lashley says agreed. I think she's agreeing with Teresa and then Teresa is answering back. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. But as long as we're in a world dominated by white supremacy, that will not happen. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to continue to read your thing. This is exactly what I am working on for myself. So what you just said there, but as long as we're in a world dominated by white supremacy, that will not happen. Are you saying that as long as we are in a world right now, we can never hope or work towards transcending the state that we are currently in? Are you saying that we are hopeless, Teresa? 
I just want to make sure that I'm understanding. Are you saying that we should just give up right now, go back into shackles, and be slaves all over again because we're never going to get past anything because of white supremacy. That is taking all of our greatness and our powerful. That's that's just smashing black the 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 idea of black excellence to smithereens. If that's the stance that I would take on for myself, then I should just give up right now and never try to be anything other than you know, just some hood ghetto girl on welfare on the system who ain't never going to try to be nothing and never try to get past anything. I should just totally feed into black inferiority. And I think that's kind of what Tom Burrell was touching on in his quote. Um, let me go back to that quote real quick and see what you guys think about that, where he was saying, Um, give me one second. In many ways, African Americans have romanticized and institutionalized low expectations. Often our goal is not to be the best, but to be the best black. The best, as in best black business or best black doctor or best black college. Inherent in these labels is a subliminal acceptance that our best is somehow naturally inferior or somehow different from the white best. So I just wanted to give you something to think about and please continue to put in your comments and let's let's have a let's have an adult conversation about this. Um, so Teresa continues to say, because we are not the ones putting us in that box, I think the way we get out of black inferiority is to learn about our African, our black African selves historically ancestors. We transcend that by knowing and defining who we are as black people. So she brought it back home. She brought it back home. This is what I'm saying, and I agree with you on that aspect of it. I don't agree with um, the aspect of as long as we're in a world dominated by white supremacy, that will not happen because we have to take steps towards it in order to shift away from the white supremacy. So if you're saying that that will not happen, you're speaking the words that the vision that you're painting after that will never happen. And so this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying transcendence, where we start to look within ourselves as individuals and also as a collective to say, where am I harboring ideas of black inferiority? And according to Tom Burrell, he's saying inherent in these labels is a subliminal acceptance that our best is somehow naturally inferior or somehow different from a white best. So when you're putting white supremacy, and yes, we understand there are systems in place. We all agree on that. But when white supremacy is put onto such a pedestal, an untouchable pedestal, that you would write a sentence out that says, that will not happen, then you're putting the nail in the coffin and you're writing a death, death sentence for yourself as a black woman. And this is from my perspective, okay? So you can take it or leave it. It's no, you know, it's all in love. We're having a discussion. But that's what that type of verbiage, that's what you're writing. You're, you know, the word has power. And so that means that somewhere inside yourself, you're thinking that you won't be able to succeed in your movement forward, in your transcendence. But after that, you come in and you say some things that, sound very good to me. You're saying because we are not we are not the ones putting us in a box. So you're saying we're not the ones putting us in a box, but I'm here saying that we are allowing ourselves to be to stay in the box. After we've been put in the box, instead of getting out of the box, sometimes we're allowing ourselves to stay in the box. And there have been studies done on this. And um, again, Tom Burrell has a couple of good quotes about this. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. The investigative team. Did it. Um, hold on. There's a really good one here. I'm going to find it. So 
while I'm still looking for that, one of the things he says that kind of touches on what you said, Teresa, is new race consciousness moves us beyond labeling. It introduces a new game board. It's no longer about changing white folks' minds. It's about changing our collective mindset. It's about people dedicated to destroying the myth of black inferiority with a powerful new media campaign. And that's what we're here doing right now by having these type of discussions, opening up the comments and saying, how can we, this is about solutions, right? How can we move beyond that? And that's what I'm asking um, for you guys to put in now. At first I was like, what do you think are some of the lies of black inferiority? And I was kind of surprised at how quiet everybody was. Like, I'm really, I'm really shocked that no one wanted to admit to some of the things that they've seen out here that are just, to me, blatant lies. Um, maybe there's, there's always a little bit of a truth in a lie. Um, if you study spirituality, you, you understand the duality of life. There's always a dark and a light side that exists in everything. So, Going back to what Miss Teresa said, um, she's saying we are not the ones putting us into a box. So she says, I think the way to get out of black inferiority is to learn about our black African selves historically and our ancestors. And we transcend that by knowing and defining who we are as black people. Absolutely. So that is the way that you transcend race. That is the way that you transcend race. So you're saying some interesting things here, right? Um, and I think it kind of um, shows, it demonstrates perfectly what a lot of us are going through. There's aspects of us that don't believe that we can move beyond this. And then there's aspects of us that are very hopeful and we kind of know what we need to do, but are we doing it? Right. And then we go back to his quote where he says, new race, race consciousness moves us beyond labeling. It moves us beyond coonery. It moves us beyond, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Victimhood. It moves us, you know, because when we always are, you know, we are always like, we can't do nothing because of white supremacy, then that puts us in a place of helplessness and victimhood. And then we don't have any self-determination. And I don't believe that we as a people who built this great country have no self-determination. I don't, I don't, I, ref, I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that me as a black woman in America has no self-determination. I don't believe that at all. If I decided to believe that, then I need to just give up on this whole movement to try to get any kind of reparations because you know what, white, white supremacy ain't never going to let us have that. Do you see what I'm saying? Is that making sense? If, if we take that on, then why fight? What are we sitting up here fighting and arguing and fussing about if we don't believe that we can move beyond it, if we don't believe that we can transcend some of these chaotic moments of disagreement and still keep our eyes on the prize and stay focused on the bigger goal of what we're trying to do and what we are accomplishing? Because believe it or not, we're accomplishing a lot right now. We're accomplishing a lot politically. We're accomplishing a lot with media. And even he says that on here. He says it's about people dedicated to destroying the myth of black inferiority with a powerful new media campaign. And what are we sitting on? We're sitting on right now new media, social media. And we're having a discussion about the possibility and ways of transcending race. And it's through these type of open discussions where you and I, Teresa, may not agree completely, but we're open enough to have a dialogue to see where we can find points that we agree. And I think I found a couple of points where I agreed with you. And then we can move forward because we both agree that by, by knowing our history, right, and knowing ourselves and getting in touch with who we are and our excellence inside, right, that we can transcend by knowing and defining who we are and not just accepting what has been projected onto us, which is the lie of black inferiority. I think that lie of black inferiority is what's keeping us in a poverty mindset, a lot of us, not all of us, but keeping some of us, a portion of the community in a poverty mindset, keeping some of us bickering, 
keeping some of us looking for our leaders to be perfect, keeping some of us putting all of our faith into leaders, period, when we should understand that the leader is there to give you guidance and to be a signpost, but it is the individual who has to move it forward and move it forward in a way that's going to benefit themselves, their family, and then the larger community and ultimately society in the world, right? So that's kind of my take on it. There was another really good quote that he had. And again, this is Tom Burrell, and he wrote a book called Brainwashed. Um, and it's called Challenging the Myth of Black Inferiority. I'm going to get this book and read it, and I'll probably come back to you guys and kind of dig into it a little bit more. And I would encourage you to check it out as well. Um, there was a comment on Fly Nubian Queen when I put up the post about what this was going to be tonight. And one of the young ladies um, said that it was a really good read, very powerful book. And I'm taking her word on that. And also from the reviews I saw as well. Now, this man shifted the advertising industry to get them to advertise to black people in a way that was respectful, excuse me, and demonstrated who we are in a positive light in advertising when he went into the advertising world. And this was kind of unheard of. Like nobody was really advertising to black people. And if they were, they were kind of doing it in a way that was from a very white supremacist perspective and it wasn't resonating with us. Right. So he came in and he kind of shattered some of those myths and shifted their perspective. And that's why we have a lot of the diversity that we do see today in the media because of this man going in and saying, no, this is not reaching black people. This is not how black people think. Black people have family values. Black people, you know, are aspirational in some ways to um, achievement. Um, black people want to be homeowners. Black people want to, you know what I'm saying? And just because we want those things doesn't mean, one of his quotes said, just because we want those things doesn't mean that we're trying to be white. And I think that is such a powerful quote because he told this to um, white advertising executives. It's not just about painting white ideals with a black face. He was able to help distinguish what is different about what we want and what we're aspiring to in our own individual lives in our community. And that shifted how they began to advertise to us. And so I know you guys probably remember the 1980s McDonald's commercials and Coca-Cola commercials. And even if you look at today, the Sprite commercials, a lot of that was influenced by his work where they could come in and start to connect with us on things that um, were relevant to us culturally, artistically, and family-wise. And so in this book, he says it right there so clearly that it's about people dedicated to destroying the myth of black inferiority with a powerful new media campaign. And that's what I'm talking about. And I've been talking about it off and on in my different videos. We have to shatter the myth of black inferiority. And I'm not the first person to say this. Dr. Cheryl Tawede Grills has talked about this in a TED talk. You can look her up. Um, Tom Burrell is talking about this um, in his book. There are thought leaders out there besides just those of us who are on social media. And I'm presenting this to you in this particular talk so that you can go and you can read some of their books and we can start to get to the bigger vision and transcend the negativity and the myth and the lie of black inferiority. It's not about not trying to be black. And what does it mean to be black anyway? What does it mean to be black? I'm presenting that question to people right now. What does it mean to be black? Does it mean that we always have to be so downtrodden? Does it mean that we have to be poor? Can you only be black if you're uh, twerking? Can you only be like an authentic black woman if you're like a single mom or, you know, one of your sons has been to prison? Does that make you more black? See, that's what I'm challenging right now is what are I, I, our ideas of what it means to be black? And if we step back and really take a look at them and remove the emotional attachment that we have to those ideas, are they rooted in black inferiority or are they rooted in black excellence? 
And this is something I want to continue to talk about. I think I'm probably going to talk about it a little bit more next week. But what does it mean to be black? Does it mean that we can only have one leader or we can only have one type of movement? I don't think as a people we're one size fit all. I don't believe that. I've known that hasn't been true. Um, whenever I try to fit into certain aspects of blackness completely, it doesn't always resonate with me because there's a part of me that's like a hippie chick. There's a part of me that's, you know, uh, really into materialistic things and, and money. There's a part of me that, you know, likes to listen to certain types of hip hop music that maybe isn't the most positive in the world. I'm still working on that. <laughs> um, you know, there's different aspects of me, right? So I don't, you're right. I don't want to be put in that box and I refuse to be put in that box. That's me transcending. No one can tell me how to wear my hair. No one can tell me what type of clothes I need to wear. No one can tell me that just because I'm melanated, that I'm less than, I'm a double negative, just because I'm a woman and I have ovaries, that I'm less than. And I, you know, no one can tell me that because I don't allow as much as humanly possible. And again, this is a work in progress. I am working on transcending that negative conditioning. And those of you have, who have been joining me week after week know that part of my principle is guiding black women to freedom from negative conditioning. And it's not like I have transcended and I'm looking down on you guys. This is a process that I'm going through and I'm sharing it with you. And I'm so glad that you're here. And I wanna say thank you again for joining me, Dina Jacobs here at flynubianqueen.com, the network for melanated women. I'm Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary here every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern time. And before we go, I just want to touch back into the um, Maslow's Pyramid of Human Needs. Now, we did touch on that, the first one, right? And let me see if I can get it. There you go. So this is how he created it at first. But what he later on in his life, he changed the pyramid and he updated it because with age comes wisdom, if you're lucky, right? And so he realized that as he began to self, as he had self-actualized, he realized that there was another phase, right? So black people are self-actualizing, realizing personal potential. Some of us are creators, inventors. We're doing more than just sports. Yeah, there's a lot of sports leaders. Some of us are getting to poli into politics and being activists on, on social media, the new black media, et cetera, right? Some of us are actualizing. We're self-realizing beyond the box that they've tried to put us in. And that's great. We should celebrate that. Absolutely. Now, are these people perfect? No, they're not. Perfect example would be Byron Allen. Byron Allen fought a case that was personal to him, but was also specific to the larger community. And it brought a black multimillionaire, media mogul, in connection with the grassroots of the new black media. That's a good thing, right? So it made us aware of something that was going on on the bigger world stage, on the bigger chessboard, where someone who had accumulated a lot of wealth and accumulated media outlets on the, 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 the bigger world stage in connection with those of us on the grassroots who are doing it on YouTube, on Instagram, on whatever platforms that they have. It connected us in that way. And that, to me, is a transcendent moment. Now, uh, some people look and say, well, he's not completely Black-owned because he did a business deal over here with these people. Or, you know, look at him. He's married to a white woman. Nobody's perfect. And that's what I'm saying by transcending Black inferiority. Because he's not perfect. None of us are perfect, right? But there was a point in time in the present moment where he had to go and represent us. And he had to go and represent something that was going to be important for those of us 
moving forward behind him. That is transcending race on, from the perspective of black inferiority. Because if we just nitpicked him apart, oh, he ain't married a black woman, or he a billionaire, he don't, what does he know about struggle? Or we, you know, we got into all those negative, inferior definitions of what it means to be black, then we wouldn't have been able to connect with him. We wouldn't have been able to support him. We wouldn't have been able to have people out in DC on the ground protesting outside of the Supreme Court. We wouldn't have had people talking about his case all over social media and make, and bringing it into the national conversation if we just simply focused in and held ourselves to the lie of black inferiority because he didn't check off the boxes of what it means to be black. And let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of what means to be black, what quote unquote it means to be black has a lot of negative connotations to it. And that's what uh, Tom Burrell gets into with a lot of these quotes. Our instance that we have broken free from the negative propaganda is wishful thinking. It takes much more than big afros, clenched fists, and danceable slogans to fight centuries of unremitting exposure to twisted images and dehumanizing messages. Tom Burrell. Somewhere along the line, uh, sorry, let me skip that one. Um, mental health experts are in general agreement that persistent exposure to humiliation, right? Black people being knocked out off of their thing because they're being accused of this, that, and the third, right? Being knocked off the pedestal, being humiliated, right? The community feeling humiliated when one of our leaders or one of our um, cherished elders is exposed as, you know, having some kind of, you know, crazy sexual history or they were doing something wrong with money or whatever, right? So he's saying that mental health experts in general are in general agreement that persistent exposure to humiliation, brutality, when we're seeing our boys and our women killed in the street. We're being exposed to brutality and abuse, being beaten up. We just saw some um, handicapped person, disabled person being manhandled by a police officer, right? Physical or emotional can program people to humiliate, brutalize, and abuse each other. And so that's what we see, is we see us going at each other because we've been programmed like this. So that's why I am talking about meditating on, transcending. How do we transcend this? And it's through conversations like this, by becoming self-aware and recognizing and calling out those aspects that are not, the devil is a lie, you know what I'm saying? Like, the devil is a lie. We are not victims. We do have self-determination. We are not in shackles anymore, at least not physically. Now it's about freeing our minds and transcending what it means to be black in a negative way. We can define that. And I absolutely thank you, Teresa Dobbins, for bringing that point up. We transcend that by knowing and defining who we are as black people. Thank you, Teresa Dobbins. I'm so glad you're here, sister. I really am. So let me scroll down. There's a couple more comments. Um, uh, w. Alvin Roster says, we are not the underclass. Absolutely. Like, I'm not taking that on. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be a part of no permanent underclass. They can just wrap that up and throw that away. I absolutely agree that we should know where we stand statistically in the present moment. But that doesn't serve us if we don't then transcend that and start to vision what the bigger picture is and what we see in the future that moves us beyond that. Teresa Dobbins says, read the whole comment. I did, I know you wrote this a while ago. Teresa Dobbins says, I mean, it won't happen if we see it as defined by the dominant white supremacist society. Personally, I know we can do that, transcend inferiority, when we learn and know about who we are as black African people. I totally discount what white people say and try to, to define me because I know they will always define us as inferior. And I would even say, you know, I appreciate um, you adding that comment in there. For myself, I have started to even move away from thinking that white people are going to see me as inferior. I don't receive that personally. 
because I don't, I see myself as excellent. Now, I'm a work in progress, <laughs> as we all are, but I'm starting to see myself and talk to myself internally in a way that is transcendent. What does it mean to be black in America? It means to be excellent. It means that I am beautifully made. I'm a brilliant, beautiful, gifted being. That's something that I made for myself and that I share with you. That's what it means to be black, a black woman in America, that I'm brilliant, I'm beautiful, and I'm a gifted being. And I live in that and walk in that as much as I can every day. Again, a work in progress. But I don't go around thinking that white people see me as inferior. Because if I allow myself to think that, then I'm resonating on that level and I'm, I'm carrying that energy with me. And then they're receiving that energy and then they're treating me accordingly. If you're looking at it in a spiritual way. W. Alvin Royster says we can dominate race through economics. That is definitely a way to get on that chessboard and compete. You know what I'm saying? Um, if we keep telling ourselves that we're an underclass and, and we ain't got no money and we poor and, and we're just like stroking that constantly and bonding over that, all we're doing is creating more of that. Where your attention goes, energy flows. So if you're only focusing on the negative aspects of who we are and what we are as a community, we need to get Byron Allen now that he, you know, he's gotten in there and done everything with this court case, come back into the community and, and teach us business practices. How do you do business on a level with Comcast? How do you do business? How do you even get to that point to where you can buy TV stations? We need that kind of information in our community. Um, let's see. W. Alvin Rossi says spiritually. W. Alvin Royster says right 1865 to 1866 being challenged. Yep. We um, know that that was what was happening with Byron Allen. And Patrick Morgan says if a girl asks for a golden shower, but I give her one, and I give her one, but some splashes in her mouth, and, and she gets what? Okay, Patrick. Um, anyway, we're going to ignore that. But you know what? I always say welcome to the trolls because, you know, you guys are here. You can get something from this, too. I know you're being silly right now, um, and that's fine. You're entitled to do that. But I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I definitely want to talk more about this next week and get a little bit more into a sense of meaning and purpose. That is when you start to self-transcend, um, according to Maslow's um, stages of self-development. So realizing personal potential. And then once you get to that point where you're realizing your personal potential, then you transcend into a sense of meaning and purpose that is bigger than you as an individual. It's going to serve humanity. And I would hazard to say that that may have just happened with um, Byron Allen. He self-actualized into a multimillionaire media mogul. But then there was a point in his life, in his journey, where he transcended into doing something that was bigger than him. It became about more than just money. It became about fighting a fight on behalf of his community. Whether he's directly connected to us or not, his life path and his purpose propelled him to transcend into a position where he could have an even greater meaning and purpose that served the collective. That's what I'm talking about. And I don't even know if he's like 100% aware, aware of how and when that shift was made, but it was beyond the point of self-actualization. But we have to take care of these things in the beginning. So we got to get our self-esteem together right now. We have to get into prestige and feeling of accomplishment. We as a community have to let go of the lies of black inferiority and understand that's a part of our shadow self and it's there, but we start to diminish the energy, pull back the energy that we feed to that and shift it into the part where we can start to self actualize. We can get into things that are prestigious and really focus in on our black excellence and bringing back those people into the community 
that have accomplished great things and have done things beyond just making money. But, you know, there's been medical breakthroughs, there's been scientific, you know, how do we really embrace the black nerds, the blurds as, the ever, as I've heard them called? How do we embrace them back in, into the community? Because a lot of them have felt disconnected from the community because they weren't into hip hop and they weren't into, you know, the street thug imagery that was portrayed in Generation X. Maybe we bring them back into the community so that we can learn from their accomplishments and their discoveries and let that serve our community versus just serving the outer greater community. Does that kind of make sense? Anyway, thank you guys, you ladies, you gentlemen, you kings and you queens. Thank you so much for showing up here for this. I really appreciate you. I love you so much. And um, as always, I'm Dina Jacobs, your Mindset Evolutioner here at FlyNubianQueen.com. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share. And we're going to dig into this a little bit more, how to transcend race and black inferiority complex. We're going to get into this more next week. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much. Please share this and continue to have this conversation offline. Continue to have this conversation. How do we move forward? How do we transcend what it means to be black from the negative perspective and get into our black excellence. I love you all so much. Have a wonderful night.